Hi, this is Linda Carruthers, and um, I uh, went to town buying me some tires and had seen a yard sale yesterday on the way home, and I came by it, and I saw I stopped at it, and I want to show you what I got, and uh, um, I'm so excited. Uh, first of all, there's this scar, and it's done, this is red and purple. and it's a, a scar and I got it because I, I figured I could cut it up and uh, use it uh, on some projects See, and you can stretch it out it'll be bigger so I got that now I don't know what size this is it's a, a new one it's not an antique one or nothing but it's a pink green and white quilt and it is a uh, I don't know what size wait hold on a minute uh, whatever a zero is that's what size it is it's 50 by 60 it says finished size but I got it for three dollars and it's beautiful. There's no, uh, there's no uh, dirt or stains or holes or anything in it for three dollars. That would make some pretty projects. Okay, then um, I got these uh, Christmas bows, ribbon bows. And uh, I got this ribbon. This is, never has been opened. It says Big Locks, three dollars. And there is uh, it's forty percent nylon and sixty percent metallic. And there is eighteen feet. And it's gold. This is like a gold a rose gold with gold trim on the end. It's wire ribbon. Okay. I got this beautiful, beautiful dark purple. That's purple, y'all. Dark purple velvet. And I just had to get that. And I got this. It's upholstery material. And look at all those dots. They're all different colors. I can use this for um, for backings on books or if you like to fussy cut you can cut these dots out and decorate them up and use them on uh, on your like paper clips, your clothes pin, your, your dangles, uh, your decorations on your books and your journals and uh, projects that you have and uh, things like that your cards well, that's what I saw. and then I saw this oh I had to get this this is upholstery material and I don't know how much is in there I don't know how much is in any of this material uh, but I got them for a 50 cents a piece but look, I got this for 50 cents. Look how pretty that is. Can you see it? It's dark red, uh, maroon colors, almost dark pink. And then it's got this, this is done in a greenish brown, and this is cream colored. And there is, uh, oh, no. I don't know. There, there's got to be a good, about a good yard of it. It's cut up, but it's, there's got to be about a yard of it. But anyway, that's got that. Now, here is what I'm excited about. Uh, I was, they had like 
hundreds of books. They had, on one side, they had this box of books, and, it, and, and at the top of it, they had a table, and they had some books on top of the table. And I was looking at the ones on the top of the table, and I saw some old ones, and I said, well, let me see. I'll just be intrigued and get look at some more. The box below the table was old books. And when I say old books, I'm talking about old books. Now, these next two that these two I'm just going to show you, they're Charles Dickerson, Dickerson books. And uh, they're both red. They're both the same size. Uh, this is them. I don't know that you can see anything on there. Uh, but they're not the same book. They're not the same. they different volumes or something. This is Walters in Black. Walters in Black. And it says, uh, Charles Dickerson has got his handwriting in the front, written in gold. And, but this one is Bleak House. Okay. And uh, it has got it's got drawing pictures. And I'm trying to find the date on this thing. I couldn't find it earlier, but it says Bleak House was first published as a volume in eighteen fifty three. After having been issued in 20 shilling monthly parts from March 1852 to, 18, uh, to September 1853. This edition contains all the copyright amendments made in the text as revised by the author in 1867 and 1868. So I'm assuming that's their date. Um, anyway. I am. So this is all about the bleak house. So that's the story. There's some pictures in there. So I can get back to it. Well, there's one. There's a drawing. There's some more in there. So, there's another one. Okay. And this is very thin, thin. Almost as thin as a thin Bible paper. You can hear it. Oh, it is. But it's a beautiful book. This one is about the lead cats. There is... 577 pages to this book and um, this book is coming apart a little bit right here but all the pages are in there okay so that's that this one is a little on the rougher side you see where the binders got roughed up by it these are both red they're dark red and they do have the uh, Red, they do have the reddish color at the top. This is more darker than this one. Um, but on the sides, they, uh, I guess this was supposed to be in gold because over here you can see where this is whiter than this is. But I'm not sure. Okay, so anyway, this one. Is called Little Dorette, D O R R I T. And it's the story of the princess, it says. And let's see if I can give you a 
They don't miss one. Um, uh, uh, I'm sorry, my hands are shaking. I'm so nervous. Oh, okay. It said Little Dorette was first published as a volume in 1857 after having been issued in 20 shilling monthly parts from December 1853 to June 1857. This edition contains all the copyright amendments made in the text as revised by the author in 18, 1867 and 1868. And this is the Little Dorette book, the first, the first book, I guess, uh, Poverty Chapter One. See, that's what it says right there. Okay. I don't know if I showed y'all the picture or not, but anyway, um, there's the picture. Now these books were owned by this uh, Ken Ken Wall Waller, I guess, because I think I was going to say Walker, but it's got two L's instead of a K and an L. And this is his little tag, and both of them has this on there. And this one, let's see if we can find any pictures in it. Okay, now there's the picture. Look how they drew back there. Isn't that beautiful? Got a little bit of stain there. Alrighty. Uh, oops, this one. Now. Okay. Um, here's another picture. Now, this book apparently comes in two parts. This is part one right here. This is part two, and I don't know that it goes any further than part two. And there's some more pictures in here. There's one right there. Sorry. Let me turn it upside. So maybe it's in two parts. Okay. And uh, I thought I saw something back here. Guess not. Okay. And there's another picture right there. Okay. Can you see that one? Okay. And this one has five hundred and forty four pages. And like I said, like the other book is starting to peel apart. So that's those two Charles, those are the Charles Dickerson books. Um Okay, here's another Charles Dickerson. Maybe I got more than Oh, I got four of them. I'm sorry. I got four books from Charles Dickerson. Shows you what I know. Uh, this is Pidwack Papers. Pickwick Papers. It's Dickerson, and it's, it was published by Walter J. Black. And they do have Charles Dickerson's signature right there, done in gold. And this, again, you got the person that on the book got these library stickers on there and uh, so this one is a Pickwick papers I don't guess uh, the posthumous papers of the Pickwick club okay and this was done. This edition contains all the copyright amendments 
made in the text as the revised by the author in 1867 and 1868. All right. And you have addressings. And let's see if we got any pictures. I'm sure we do. Okay, there's one right, right there's one, you see it, alrighty, and these are all made from the same kind of papers, the papers are the same. I'm showing a picture. Oh, look at that one. Okay. And another picture. Okay, and there is 522 pages. And then it's like the other books. They're about all of them's red, and it's dark red, with a dark red up here. And then this, uh, I guess it's supposed to be gold, but most of it's gone. Uh, it kind of looks speckly. And then there's white down here. Alright, now this one is the worst book of all of them. So I'm thinking it's got to be the oldest one. This is David Copperfield. And this is the binder, and the binder you can tell is coming off. And it's, uh, says Dickerson, it's got the uh, emboss on there. It's by uh, Walker J. Black, is the publisher. It's got Charles Dickens. Dickerson's signature again on the front, done in gold. Hmm. It's got the red top. This is uh, up, I think, with gold at one time. And then this is white down here, or cream color. Okay, it's got the uh, library card on the front of the person who owned the book. Hmm. It's got pictures in it. This is the friendly waiter, and I is what it said. And this is a personal history and experience and observation of David Copperfield, the younger, a blunderstone rookie, which he never meant to publish on any account. <laughs> oh, okay. And. Uh, this was, let's see if I can find you a date on there. Okay. Um, okay, now this one was written uh, from May 1849 to eight, uh, November 1850, but the last copyright date was uh, 1867 and 1868. And this is all about David Copperfield. Oh. Let's see if I can find you some pictures. Yet, but I don't mean anything. Else. Oh, whoa, whoa. there's one right there. 
My Child White Old Companion. And that's the two ladies right there. The elderly is sitting in the chair and his wife is at the bed. And then it's in two parts, I guess. Okay. There's a picture that says, I find Mr. Barkus going out with the tide. I guess he's passing away too. And there's some uh, bus spots or some spots in there. There's uh, Mr. Piggletree Dream Comes True. There's some of these spots, like this one. You see that right there? There's some of them spots on some of these pages in here. Not big, but just... Okay. All right, and this is David Copperfield, and there is... Uh, 583 pages in here. And of course there's a blank sheet and then the binder right there. Okay, look at that. Isn't that pretty? Okay, and so there's four Charles Dickerson books. Then two of these, but they're different. Trying to get them out of this book. And these, this one you can't tell nothing. It's all crusty up and everything. And it's embossed. I don't know whether you can see it or not. Can you tell? It's embossed with a leaf right here. Uh, it looks like a leaf, but it's a. Uh, could be a, like a shield or something. And then there's some decor goes around this like right here. And then there's two lines go right here and around. And then around the edge here. Alright. Now, I really can't tell you what it says. But it was published by J.B. Lippincock and Company. And... There's some writing on there, but I can't tell what it says. But I will show you the inside, and we'll go from there. Look at that. And that's a darkish yellow color. And there's some goodies down there. Have to scoot y'all back a little bit. I put the book on the table. Okay. Now, oh, isn't that pretty? It's Waverly's Novels. Aptop Sport Edition, and it's a per there's a portrait of Sir Walter Riley right there. That's Sir Walter Riley, and then here's the title page. Look at the little wolfy in the night. I got all that crust around the edges. And they're like that all over the place. Now this is thick paper. Well, this is thin. This here is thicker. This is almost like a, uh, a cardstock. This is paper. And uh, let's see. It says, uh, Abstract Forward Edition. The Waverly Novels by Sir Walter Scott, uh, complete in 12 volumes, printed from the latest English edition. Mm. It's 1857. Okay, this is volume 6. 
Uh, I mean, this is the 12 volumes it says. So this is volume 6. In Killingworth. That's who that is supposed to be. Okay. Now, let's see. Killingworth. And look at the print. It's real tiny, and it's shrunk. They give you all this border for stuff. Let's see, that's the. This is the instruction to Kimmel, and this is the chapter the first. It's weird how they talked back then. Look at that. There's pictures. There's a lady. Let's see. Somebody, Teresa Lane, interview with Amy Rouser. Anyway, so let's see if I can. And uh, so each chapter has a picture in it. Earl of Messenger and Countess Amy. Okay. And we'll just keep on going. And here's some more. Now all these pages have marks and dots and um, crusty stuff on them. Okay, they discover the smith. The smith was the blacksmith back then. Oh, talking about little letters. Look at this. Can anybody read that? But I sure as heck can't. I'd have to have a magnifying glass, and then I don't know that I could read it. But that is a little, this is already too little for me to read up here. Imagine trying to read that. Okay. Oh, and it's got, uh, Some of these, it's got the uh, footnotes down here at the bottom. My dear, that's what this is, footnotes. Yeah. And there's some more of that little tiny writing. Here's another picture. Maybe y'all can see that or not, but I'm... Okay. There's another picture. The queen, or it looks like the queen. You can, if you didn't like the pictures, you could take and cut the fussy, cut her out, and put her in a, a journal or a fabric book. Or and there's another picture. Oh, look at this. This is the pirate. And there's the two ladies right there. And that's got to be the death angel because it got it covered up. And 
There's another picture. Uh, Nora, Norna, still the tempest. Okay. And now, there's some more pictures in here, but I'm not going to, we can sit here all day looking at the goodies here. There is 572 pages in here. So there's two books in here. There's the, uh, first is Kenworth, and then the other one is the Pirate. So, anyway, so that's that one, and on the back looks just like the front. It's got the, all that embossing uh, stuff on it, just like it does on the front. So that's that one. Now this one says Waverly Notes, I've got edition, illustrated. Uh, this is volume nine. Red Gallant, the Betrothed, the Talisman. So there's three of them, three books in this one, three stories. And there's that dark peachy yellow again. Yeah. All right. <coughs> there's pictures. This is cover page here. And this is this one about the first story, I guess. Uh, Prince Charles Edward leaving England. Uh, this was copyrighted in 1857. Here's the page. And this is. Red Gallant. That's the first story. Red Gallant. Okay. And that's the title page, I guess. And so it's got that little writing again, just like the other one did. It's got all the, I know you're looking at it upside down and I'm sorry. There's a, a picture right there. It's got all that, back, you wouldn't have to decorate it uh, for, uh, or even uh, stain edges of it. It's already stained. Look at that. If you didn't like the picture, you want to use back into this. Excuse me. On uh, Peter Pebbles. That's what he. That's who he is right there. Peter Pebbles. All right. Uh, Okay. And, oh, look at this. Now, this is the color of the normal pages. Okay? Look at this. This is darker. Let me show you how dark it is. Can you tell? Look how dark. Look how dark. These are, oh, that's dark. That one's dark. Look at this picture. This is the uh, dance castle. Well, darkest, darkry castle, Cumberland. There's your castle. Alrighty, just more than dark pages.
more of them. They look like they're not, these are not accidentally stained or nothing. They were purposely stained different colors. So this must be the color, the way they printed them. Um, it's a darker color. There's the High Street of Dumfries. Yeah, so the second, yeah, then they, I don't know why they changed colors back to light though, but that section is dark, all of that is dark brown paper, or that dark color paper. Mm. I don't know why it changed why they changed the colors on it. This is all white and clear. Okay. There are some more pictures and they're all faculty. And all that. That's now I don't know if that was done purposely that way or if somebody's been mistreating the book really bad. But anyway, that's the way it looks. But it looks good that way. Isn't that good? And look at the back of the picture. You could use that if you didn't want to use the picture. There's some more pictures. Okay. Mm -hmm. More brown papers. So you got like two different colors of papers in here. See, this is light cream, and this is more of a oh, almost a dark brown. Now here's the second story. It's Tales of the Crusaders. And this is the farmer's interview with Damien the lady. Okay. And this is the patrol. Oh, look at this writing. It's over here on this page. There's a little bitty, bitty, bitty right in here. And there's still a little right in here. And then there's this right in here. And it gets almost too little for you to read. So there's like two or three different sides right. Oh, look, Michelle, if you watch this video, Look at there. The old English type writing. Look at there. Oh, isn't that beautiful? I know you like that stuff. Oh. Okay. Oh. More brown pages, back on the brown pages. There's the death of Raymond Bergener. Somebody walloped him good. Poor little old horsey. <coughs> horsey. More brown papers. Rose and Lady Evelyn, Evelyn on the battlement. Ladies fought back then.
more brown papers. Okay. This is Gator Idris. I can't pronounce it, but it's Marino Shire. It's a place. I don't know where the place is at. Got to be over in London in England somewhere. Alright, so let's see. We saw some of this book. It's like that all the way through there. And then the back book is tells me. Corrad killed by the Grand Master. There's some pictures in there, brown pages. Uh, Sir Kenneth and somebody in, in the chapel, in the chapel. But you could, there's brown and creams and white. Let's see. Oh, look at that picture. King Richard. Trampling on the Austrian banner. King Richard. Uh, yeah. uh, Sir Kenneth's interview with Lady Egan. Yeah. More pictures. All right, more brown pages, and there is 683 pages here. And that's a pretty brown, that's the last page of the book. And then there's this page with yellow on one side and the cream on the other. Okay, and that's those two volumes. This volume six, I think we said. In volume nine. Alright. Oh. oh gosh. Now. Whew. Okay. I got these three. And they're from the same. I want to say they're the same. Uh, thing. Companies and stuff. Uh, they're just different volumes in their different countries. This darker one, which it has the red, is darkest. It's the dark brown here. That's what I'm going by. It says Stoddard's Lectures, Volume Six. It's about uh, Berlin, Vienna, St. Petersburg, and Moscow. And it's got this beautiful flower on the bottom. Look at that. Can y'all see that? Let me turn it this way. Maybe you can read it that way better. I don't know. I'll try to hold it up that way so you can see. Okay. Uh, second one is Daughter's Lectures, Volume 10. Um, California, Grand Canyon, and Yellowstone Park. And it's got a reddish orange, I guess is what you call it. And this is more of a reddish brown. And it does have these parts coming off right here. See, there's flowers. And there's a binder on that one. Okay. And this one is Stoddard's Lectures. It doesn't say what volume it is. It has a, a picture of a flower, or I mean a leaf, or some grapes, whichever way you want to go by. And it says Canada, two lectures, and M-A-L-T-A. -A. And then it's Gibraltar. G-I-B-R-A-L-T-A-R. -A -A so I have no earthly idea. And it has a flower on the bottom. So I'm going to try to hold it still where you can see it. 
Okay, so we're going to start with this one, and this one is a uh, um, reddish, got some brown in it. It's not as faded at the top. See, this one is like that, but this one is more faded. See, it's almost faded. Okay, now these all has the gold. Uh, edging at the top uh, on the sides here it looks like if it had any it's been erased now this is the Canada we're just going to call this the Canada book because uh, I don't know what else to call it but look at the pretty this is pretty green I don't know if you can see it it's green and silvery cream silver it's got some blue in there almost. I don't know whether you can see the sparkle or not. I hope you can because it's pretty. And uh, this is John L. Stoddard's Lectures. Um, okay, let's see if I can find you a date on here. And that's a pretty print. And that is a picture of Hermit Range from Glacier House. And this is Supplementary Volume Number Two. So this is a supplementary volume. Um, okay, the expiration, I mean the copyright date is MCMXI. So that's going to be... 1911, I will say. I think that's right. I'm right on that. Can y'all see that? I'm trying to show it to you. Um, I will say that's what it is. And these are silky pages here. Look at that. That's Canada. I know, yeah, we got some Canada ladies that would love this book. Or some people who would like to have this book. Now, okay. There's all kinds of pictures. I'm sorry. All of these are black and white pictures. There's not any colored ones that I've seen. There's pictures on every page. Yeah, statues. Okay. Mm. Let me see some of Canada. Oh, look at this. Wouldn't that make a pretty Christmas card? No time travel. Ships. So long, fella. There he is. That's some pretty pictures. Windmill. There's a waterfall. Still in Canada. Look at that castle.
There's some horses farming. There's Indians. Northern Mountains, Mount Temple, and Paradise Valley. There's a big city in Canada. Oh, okay. Now, sorry. We are at Malta. Malta is there. And look at that pretty picture. This is the colored picture of Malta. And then the rest of it's all black. Some pictures in there. This the seashore. People. Okay. I guess that's all it's about a seaport. Okay, there's some more sea light boats. And John D. La Belate. That's who that is, John. So if I mess this name then. More pictures of the cities or towns or ports. Uh, children playing. This is the youthful St. John. And then this is Gil Gibbetar, a descendant of the conquerors. And this is the Okay, and there's a list of illustrations. Um, the uh, last page is 328. Uh, actually, the index counts, and there's 336 if you count the index. And then there's about more of that green and blue and silver glittery stuff on the back of this book. Now that's that one. Now I'm not going to go through the other two just as quickly, but I'm going to show y'all what I can. This is broke on the bottom here. And it's faded at the top here. It doesn't have that good look on it that this one does. See how that one looks really good? This one is faded. You can tell it. it and this one here is darker than this one. Alright, it's still got all that pretty stuff. Got the pictures in it. This was uh, 1911. This one was done in 1911. Well, no it wasn't, I'm sorry. It's copyrighted 
It says copyright 1880, 1898 is what it says. Oh, and it says copyright 1911. Okay, so I was right. All right. This is, this is Southern California. I guess we're doing Southern California and Northern California. I'll just go through here and show you. Picture. Every page has pictures, and the papers are kind of silky, but it has smooth silk to it. And it is a little sticky feeling, but it's not real thick. I think you could maybe fold the pictures. And look at that. You see that? I'm just going to go through this real. Now this is Northern California. Let's see pictures. Well, I said it said northern. I'm sorry, it's still southern. I don't know what I was thinking. Okay. Grand Canyon of the Colorado is next. And Canyon of the Colorado, that's Grand Canyon. Somebody tore it right there. Grand Canyon, boy. Grand Canyon. Grand Canyon. And apparently it had some water damage. And some of the pages might stick together, but you could easily get them apart. Grand Canyon. Yellowstone National Park. pictures. More pictures of Yellowstone. Okay, and the index. There is Well, there is 304 pages of writing, and then there's the index, and there is Hello. There's 34 pages of index, and then there's a list of illustrations. So, uh, there's 58. Pages. Let's include the index and the illustrations. So there's 362 pages all total. And then the back looks just like the front. Now this one is the worst book of all three of them. It's kind of, like I said, it's faded in the front. It's got the beat up thing here. And it's kind of trashed on the edges here. And so I would say that was the worst of them. Now, this is the, the one with the dark, dark brown color. And it's the deep red here. So this, I think, is the best book. It's not faded in it. Now, it does have a piece that was scratched off or something like that. But otherwise than that, I think, the book itself, it looks good. It's got some bumpy edges, but otherwise than that. 
Uh, it's still got the green and the blue with the silver on it. On the front and the back. Um, this is Berlin, Vienna, St. Petersburg, and Moscow. And this one, I think I told y'all was, yeah, 1911. And this is uh, the River Spree. Uh, this is volume six. And it's got some mortar stains on it. It was copyrighted in 1911, originally copyrighted in 1898. Well, the first section is Berlin. This is Berlin. I'm just going to go through it. They got some wet pages here. I'm trying to get through here so we won't have a really long thing. What I'm really excited about is they had like um, five or six big boxes of books. And I wasn't able to go through them all. So I told them, I asked him what they're going to do with the books after the yard sale. And he said, just give them away. I said, well, now, if you want to get rid of them, just give me a call. I'll get less than my phone number. So said, give me a call, and I'll come pick them up. So I'll have some more books. Because they had other stuff besides these old ones. They had craft books and things. This is the Yenna. Um, I didn't get to dig through all of them. I just uh, I had to go back and get some money from the bank to pay them with. So, no, oh, these are pretty pictures of Vienna. All kinds of pictures. Mm. Like an old uh, towns and cities of Europe, Europe, yeah, cities. Uh, the statue of Theus. Okay. Vienna. We're still in Vienna. This is the museum and monument. Alright. Get out of Vienna for a minute. There's some pretty pictures. I know y'all can't see them that well, but I'm, and I'm sorry I'm having to go through here fast. Oh, look at this young lady. Wouldn't she look good, fussy cut it, and put in a, uh, a fabric uh, book or a journal? Oh. St. Petersburg is next. And this is St. Petersburg, apparently. And there's the uh, the Tashna um, and the Tazar. I guess that's the uh, king and queen, as you can say. St. Petersburg. St. Petersburg. And then this is Moscow. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot. 
I was busy flipping through the end stuff up in St. Petersburg. This is Moscow. This is Moscow. Okay. And if you're interested in any of these books, let me know. Uh, leave a comment down in the comment section. And uh, I'll tell you, give me your, when, if you're interested in them, just give me your best price on them and we'll go from there. Now, this is a craft book that I got there. I saw it was on top and I just went ahead and got it. Uh, I didn't, wasn't able to go digging any further. But uh, this is the paper backing. Take that off. And it's just a regular solid book. And so you got all that paper you can. Now, this one is copyrighted. Um, let's see. Look at the pictures. Isn't that beautiful? You could use those, and you could use this in a Christmas card, on a Christmas card. And look at all the pictures. You could just cut it up. Uh, this is a newer thing. I don't know what the copyright date is. Uh, so I'll look at it while I go through this. There's all kind of pictures of flowers. And look at the blue dishes. Blue dishes. And this is poppery. You can use the words. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, look at the little angel. Ribbons and trims, it says. Shows you how to make bows, and double ladder bows. And all that stuff's so crackling, sponging, dragon colors. Yeah. In that for you? Look at the little bird. Painting techniques. Fabric painting. Kind of what brushes to use. Here's some more pictures. Valentine's Day had them do a heart. Pretty pictures. Friendship garden pen. Look at the little heart. See the little heart? There's some sunflowers, the flowers. A friendship Tussie Mussy. Easter. Little rabbits and hearts. If you don't know how to draw, you can trace. You use tracing paper and trace. Or scan it. And uh, Mother's Day. How to make a Mother's Day pillow. That is pretty. Look at the wreath. Gifts for spring. Welcome gifts. Fruit of summer. Look at it. There's a book with the lace and bow on it. Wedding gifts. Oh, look at here. Look at that. I got all these signs. You got your forgiveness, good health, happiness, happy home, long life together, love, loving, patience, happy holidays, sense of honor, time with friends, understanding, and then they got some blank ones here that you could use on your projects. 
You can copy these or scan these and copy them and put them on your little projects. Anniversary gifts. Let me put your frame. Hearts right there. Baby gifts. Look at the little teddy bear on the rocking horse. Can you see it? Look at the rabbit doll. I still haven't found a copyright thing. But I think you can look at the dolls. Those are the Victorian dolls. Country dolls like the little house on the prairie and that sort of thing. It has the uh, pictures. There's a kitty kitty. I don't know if you can see the kitty. I got him upside down. I know it is. And then Father's Day. Gifts for the gardener. Independence Day gift. Never thought about giving somebody a gift for Independence Day. Except take them out to see the firecrackers, fireworks, back to school gifts. Look at the flower. Can y'all see that one? I know it's upside down. We got all kinds of pictures in here. Look at that. And there's another one. Now see, you can take this. This is the thing. You can take this picture right here. You can put a piece of tracing paper over it and trace it. Or scan it. I guess you can scan it on the computer with very, very thin paper. Then you can take the the tracing paper and cut these out so that it looks like a cutout. And then you can use it as a stencil and put it on anything you want to put it on. You can put it on a hand bag, a tote bag. You could put it on a book. You could put it on furniture. You could do whatever you want to if you have your stamp in it. Halloween's coming up. Gifts for the cook. It's got the little labels here. And there's another read. Thanksgiving gifts. Christmas. It's Christmas. Oh, look at the heart. Look at the bird. Got the bird pattern. There's an angel. I guess this is the body part of the angel. There's gifts for pets. Okay. And then there's labels for the crafters. It says handmade by and handmade by gift certificates. If you can use blank ones. Look at the labels here. You can copy them all. Put them on your book and your your work. And look at that. Isn't that pretty? Uh, gift wrap, lace doily wrap, uh, summer wrap gifts, tea party, winter gifts, resource guide, index. And then there's a beautiful picture. And I still haven't seen a date on here anywhere on here. But 
I still think you could use that. But anyway, this is the last of my books yeah, that I got. So if you're interested in any of the books or anything you've seen in this uh, video, just put your name or contact me through, just put your, your comment down there in the comment section. And I will try to get back to you. And uh, I will get back with you. And we'll see. Uh, if you're interested in any of the books, I say the uh, name your own price. You can put your own price on the comment section. And we can go from there. Okay? All right. Thank y'all. Y'all have a good day, a blessed day. And God bless y'all. Bye-bye.